Hey everyone, hope you are doing awesome. Welcome back to my channel Pega Hut with another video. Thanks everyone who subscribed to my channel and requesting the topics for me to cover. That way I am getting to know what you all need. I am adding all your topics in my backlog so I can finish one by one. So don't you worry if I haven't acted on your request, rest assured I am working on the same. Mr. Suresh has requested me to cover data transform so today we are going to discuss the same. What is data transform? Transform means you are manipulating or changing, right? So data transform means you are manipulating and changing the data. Other way I would say you are transforming the data from one form to another, right? So this is this is a very simple definition, a basic English definition, isn't it? Now there are several actions that you can do in data transform. Please note this is a very important concept that we use in real time to write any Pega code because data transform are the most lightweighted and easy to use which helps you to manipulate the data in very easy way. Now let's see how it looks like in Pega and what all way you can manipulate the data by using the tra data transform. So I am going to divide this entire topic into four parts introduction, part one, part two and part three. Today I am going to explain all the tabs about data transform and also a detail level on what action we use on when. Okay, without doing further delay, let's straight away see how the data transform looks like and what are the options that we have we have got in the data transform to manipulate the data. Right? So what I'm going to do is the first step is obviously to log into the Pega. And uh, I've actually thought of a use case and I've actually created a case accordingly. Uh, so uh, I've, I've created something called math function. So to, to understand sorry, to understand different um, operations uh, in the data transform, I have got multiple use cases and I'm going to, you know, explain the use cases and then I'm going to tell you how you're going to achieve that use cases by using that particular operation. That's the whole idea of today's session. Um, because obviously there are a lot of operations that I need to cover uh, uh, for uh, the uh, data transform. So uh, first thing first, let's create a data transform to see how it looks like. So to create a data transform, what you need to do is it's inside the data model, right? So inside the data model, when you expand, you will see there is a data transform, isn't it? So when you create a default uh, case or when you create a case, these are the two default data transform which will be already there in your uh, application. So uh, we, we, we will talk about this uh, default uh, uh, th these are called Pega extension point, but this is not what we're going to focus in this session. So let me create one data transform first. People who do not know how to create, you cre come here in the data model, create a data transform, and then you will find an option to create a data transform. Now, once you click on the data transform, what we need to do is we need to first obviously put a name. Now, let's say I will put a name as calculate. Uh, um, uh, result something like that because I, I have a use case in my mind so I've just named it uh, like that so now rest everything which you guys know that obviously you will have a context you'll have apply to classes in the apply to classes depending on where you wanted to uh, keep it uh, based on that you wanted to reuse it uh, reuse this data transform uh, you you need to think about reusing the data transform and based on that you need to choose the class at the moment, I'm going to go ahead simply with the math function and then I'm going to create and open. So the moment you create and open, right? So this is how a data transform will look, in, look like, right? Now it has got different tabs. First thing, obviously the definition tab where you got all the function. Now here in the action, if I click on, you will see several functions, right? Set, a remove, update page and all these functions. So these are powerful function which actually um, you know, help you to uh, manipulate the data 90% of the time, right? Uh, so that, that's why it's very popular and, you know, uh, you would see any project you go, you will see a lot of data transform has been used to manipulate the data. It's very lightweight in nature and also very easy to, you know, uh, write the coding. So uh, the, I would explain each and every function, but I'll just try to overly cover on, um, you know, what all option you got, uh, you get and then um, I'll come and explain this one. Now over here you will have uh, you know uh, plus to add a row. 
or delete arrow, you need to click on this delete arrow, right? Now here you'll have collapse and expand all. When you have multiple steps, then you can just click on expand all and it will expand. Click on uh, collapse all, it will collapse, right? Now in the action, you choose an operation, let's say set. In the target, you set the, you, you choose the property that you want to manipulate. Remember this one. You choose a property that you want to manipulate or you want to change, right? In the source, you will choose a property that you want to get the data from, correct? I will explain that. Now, the relation will be equal depending on what you choose uh, the action, depending on it will show here. Now, over here, if you see, uh, there are certain select uh, values depending on what option you choose, you will uh, see this one. I will uh, cover that in our session today. And also there is something called gear icon. So this gear icon is nothing but to write your own expression. Yes, I'm going to definitely, uh, you know, have a use case which will uh, cover this one also. I hope this, this is pretty clear and none other than our call super class data transform. So I have already covered a video of call super data uh, transform. I will uh, probably, you know, give the uh, link in the description box. And if people wanted to understand how this works, you can refer to my video. I have explained purely or uh, I, I have explained clearly on how this, this functionality works in Vega. It's really interesting. Don't uh, miss out this one. Now, coming back to parameter phase, uh, parameter is something that you uh, can create a temporary variable where during runtime, if you call this data transform, you pass those variables and then you manipulate this one. And coming here to page and class, what you can do is uh, you can uh, create a temporary page and then do something about it, manipulate the data and uh, it's kind of a create a temporary storage, hold the data on that storage, use that data as part of your data transform and then you can, if you want, you can remove that data, something like that. Or, or let's say uh, people who knows about database, you can, you know, wherever in the data transform you are going to use the database, you need to define the database and class here. So that, that's where you, you got page and class uh, here. Uh, uh, and then you got specification. It's just, uh, uh, I mean, 90% of the time you won't use it because it's about the case type and all these things. So, I mean, at least I haven't used it so far in my experience. So I would not focus on this one. Now history, obviously, your description uses and all these features. So this is what data transform will look like. Now, coming back to definition tab, let me quickly explain what each and every action does. So set, set means you are setting a value. So when I say set target, means you are setting a value, uh, whatever property you're gonna choose over here, you are setting a value to that property. Second one is remove. So when you set a property, that will go and set in the clipboard, right? Now, similarly, I mean, clipboard, eventually it will go to database depending on the point of commit, but uh, mainly the, let's focus that you are going to set the value and it, you can see that in clipboard. Now, remove means you are going to remove that property uh, from the clipboard. Update page. Update page is nothing but when you want to update a page in Pega. So how you have simple parameter like uh, text parameter, um, or uh, um, text input or integer or float like that. We have got also a page, right? To uh, update those pages or manipulate those pages is where you're gonna do update page. Apply data transform, you call another data transform inside this data transform. It is not exactly the same like call super class data transform, just to correct uh, you guys, because call super class data transform will check the exact name and it will try to find out uh, the data transform name in the parent class. But here, apply data transform, you can have another data transform in the same layer. Let's say I told calculate result here. I, I have another um, data transform, which will say uh, show result or something. Then you can call that. Now, why would you do that? I would obviously explain uh, as and when the thing will come, but uh, on, a, on a very high level, you do want to, so let's say you got a uh, big set of coding or big set of data manipulation uh, written over here. You do want to end up writing you know, 40, 50 steps in a same single data transform because it will, first thing is it's a readability perspective. It's very confusing. And second thing is when you're going to debug something, it's going to be very hard for you. So always try to uh, decouple those code into a tiny, tiny piece, which will help you in changing the code at the same time you can also read that properly. 
So that's why we always use multiple data transform, data transform inside another data transform, just so that we can logically separate a set of code and can put it into one place. Whenever we need, we can properly go there and understand. So uh, you, you will get to know slowly. Um, short, short is nothing but when you got a page list, you got a page list property which you wanted to show on the screen. Uh, or you know on a drop down or something right now you wanted to uh, short them by ascending or descending order uh, so uh, short will help you to achieve that uh, so remember when you put short here you will always have a page list to give over here in the target right and obviously there is nothing that you are going to uh, set over here that's why you see there is no source here right now coming back to comment comment is uh, nothing but one of the most important feature that we use in uh, data transform uh, it's just to uh, put a comment on what kind of code you're writing in the uh, at the bottom reason behind is when your lead is going to review or in the future let's say somebody coming and reviewing your code they will at least get to know what kind of coding you have written or at least what functionality you have written by looking at the comment so um, uh, i i know not many people use that but I personally like to use this one because it gives a, a clear, nice view for people who wanted to review what my code is written here. So it's very important according to me. And I would uh, strongly suggest you guys to follow, put a comment, not everywhere. Obviously you don't want to put every uh, line, a comment uh, on what the bottom line is doing, but try to, you know, combine or, you know, try to put a comment on, on a, a chunk of code and explain them what the below set of code is doing. So that at least, you know, that will give a context uh, to the person who is seeing your code, right? Now we got when, otherwise when, otherwise, it's simple, like, you know, people who knows uh, Java or at least, you know, normal uh, language also, even English language. So if you see, uh, it's like if, else if, and else. Simple. So if this condition true or when this condition true, you do this. Otherwise, when this condition true, you do this. Otherwise, if they both do it doesn't fit to your uh, condition, then it will uh, execute the otherwise one. So depending on the conditions, you always going to use the when condition, when otherwise when. Uh, append to and append and map to. Uh, I, I, I've given a little bit of hint uh, when I was just uh, explaining in my other uh, uh, session where I have used this append to and append and map to um, um, while explaining this uh, repeating dynamic layout. People who wanted to see that video is there in my channel. So I can also give a description uh, for repeating dynamic layout. But um, uh, I have just explained a little bit over there. Uh, and today I'm going to demonstrate on how you're going to use the app and to end, uh, app and end map to. Now, uh, this is another thing for each page. So if I, okay, uh, before I go there, if I choose a app and to, so you see page list is where, uh, uh, what it expect. And if you choose app and end map to also, it's expect a page list to, uh, for us to uh, provide, uh, for us to give. Uh, now you got for each page in, exit for each and exit data transform. So for each page in is nothing but, again, it will ask for a page list or a group. So what it does is it just uh, loop in the page list and uh, let's say I have, I have got a page list where I have got uh, four uh, iteration. It will loop for each iteration. If you want to manipulate something, it will loop and try to uh, do the manipulation for you. It's simple like for people who know Java, it is nothing but, uh, you know, your uh, for condition, right? For i equal to g um, zero, uh, i less than equal to n and then i plus plus. So that, that's what for each is all about. Now, end of uh, exit for each, obviously, you, if you uh, if you are trying to manipulate something and you are trying to uh, exit the iteration, uh, right, you don't want to continue for depending on the certain uh, condition, you don't want to continue with that iteration, then we exit from that for each, right, that's where you're going to use. And exit data transform is, let's say you got a chunk of code here. And let's say after a certain thing, you are checking a when condition, uh, wherein if that when condition is true, you don't want to uh, check, uh, uh, for example, I've been um, here, if I gave like, I've got like multiple step, and here, let's say I've got a when condition, right? Now, let's say if this condition true, I don't want this four step to be executed. So these are, so data transform, remember guys, data transform is sequential, right? Now first it will execute this one, then this one, then slowly this one. Now let's say in this scenario, if I choose uh, a condition, condition equal to equal to false. No, this is not the syntax. I'm just explaining to like a normal English. 
uh, then you want to exit the data transform. You don't want this to be executed, right? During that time, you can use this functionality. It is another uh, important uh, functionality and uh, you know, it will give a, a freedom, uh, give you a freedom on how you wanted to manipulate the data and where you wanted to stop your data to be manipulated, all these things. So this is also another one. Uh, so yeah, now I what I'll do is, I hope you um, got uh, a gist of all the uh, actions that we have got on a very high level, obviously. So the next video we will cover is planned. So stay tuned and I'm going to post the next one soon where we will take a use case and see how we will use the action and manipulate the data in real time. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and click on the bell notification for my new video updates. Like I tell always, sharing is caring. So do share my video so others will be benefited. Thank you.